Imagine I take out a withdrawable type circuit breaker from a medium voltage switchgear panel when it is in the closed condition, when the current is flowing into the system. Well, that is the worst situation. There will be arcing, maybe it can cause a fire and maybe worst condition can arrive. This situation will certainly is not acceptable one. And to save us from such type of situation, interlocks in the switchgear comes into picture. In this video, we are going to talk about what is this interlock, what is the purpose of them and what are some of the examples uh, given by the IEC standard for this interlocks. We are going to talk about that in this video. Hello there, welcome to the channel. My name is Gaurav J. On this channel, I simplify electrical engineering. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel with bell notification icon turned on so that you will be getting to know about all these types of interesting content. In this video, we are going to talk about the interlocks that we provide in the switchgear. First, let us start by understanding what is this switch interlocks and what is the definition of that. So the simplest definition is interlock in switchgear are safety system that prevents the switchgear from being operated incorrectly. So interlocks are nothing but the safety system that prevents the switchgear from being operated incorrectly. Now the example that I shared in the beginning of the video is basically the incorrect operation of the switchgear. Right. I took out the breaker, withdrawable type breaker when it was in the closed condition, when current was flowing into the system and that resulted into the worst condition. To avoid such type of scenario, to avoid such type of incorrect operations, this switchgear uh, interlocks in the switchgears are must to have. If we had the interlocks in place, then I wouldn't have been able to remove that breaker and the worst situation that we saw wouldn't have been appeared. Right. So that is the importance. That is why we need to have interlocks into the switchgear. There are certain mandatory interlocks that we must provide and there can be some optional where customer can define based on the requirement based on the application. So if we look at these interlocks in the switchgear, there are three major purpose of that. Number one, safety. Certainly uh, the interlocks provides the safety. It makes sure that we don't do any wrong operation, any incorrect operation of the switchgear, thereby providing the highest amount of safety to the persons working near to the switchgear. The second purpose is the efficiency. These interlocks make sure that the uh, there is no incorrect operation and the switchgear always operating at the highest amount of efficiency. So that is the second important purpose. The third purpose is the maintenance. These all these interlocks make sure that the switchgear is safe to maintain. It is safe to operate. And it is only recommended that when the switchgear is completely in the safe condition, in that case only uh, the maintenance must be carried out. If the switchgear is not safe to operate or safe to touch, then definitely no maintenance must be carried out. And all these things is possible because we have interlocks in place. We have uh, the right interlocks given in the switchgear that help us in achieving all these things. So that is the purpose of the switchgear. Uh, sorry, that is the purpose of the interlocks. Now, uh, these interlocks can be of two different types. One is the mechanical interlock and another one is the electrical interlock. Now mechanical interlocks are pretty common, not only in the switchgear, but you can see anywhere uh, it, you will find it. Maybe we, we can take example of the door of the refrigerator that we have. You know, that door you can open to a certain limit only, to at a certain degree only. You cannot 360 rotate it, right? So there are interlocks provided for that. So you open it to the end and it will stuck to that, right? You will not be able to push it more than that. That is the limit and that is provided by the interlock and that is nothing but the mechanical interlocks. Some sort of, uh, you know, uh, mechanical parts are provided which will prevent a certain moment of the parts. So that is mechanical interlock. The second type of interlock is the electrical interlock. Now in electrical interlock, we don't, you know, give the wires and hook it up with something else so that it will not move. No, that's not we, what we do in electrical interlocks. Electrical interlocks are basically the logics, the wiring logics that are developed to make sure one operation is performed after a certain condition is met. Let me quickly share one example with you here. Imagine we have a light bulb 
uh, and to which we have connected a supply, a DC supply, for example. Now, of course, it will need a positive and negative terminal. Here, it is just shown for the illustration purpose, understanding purpose. And what we have done is we have connected a normally open contact in series with the bulb of one of the contactor. Now, this is an interlock. How? Unless and until this contactor is getting supply, uh, the bulb will not be turned on. So the interlock here is the contactor must get the supply first and then only the bulb will turn on. Because the property of the contactor is that the moment the coil in that contactor is energized, this normally open contact will be closed and the light bulb will turn on. Right? So that is the electrical interlock. The condition is this contactor must get the supply. Only then this light bulb, light bulb will be turned on. Even if you give supply to this bulb directly, it will not turn on because the contact is normally open. The supply will not pass through. That is the electrical interlock. Now, before we go and understand the different examples of interlocks that we provide in the switch garret, if you are finding this video helpful, then do like this video. And if you in general find my YouTube videos helpful, then you will also love the different courses that I have created on the different topics that are needed in the switch gear industry. There is a lot of courses available. You can just go to courses.theelectricalguide.in and check out all the courses that is available. It is already helping a lot of students out there and definitely it can also help you. So definitely go and check it out. The link is in the description. Now let us go ahead and talk about some of the actual examples that are there in the switch gear. The first example and the most common and the most important one is also uh, the interlock that we must provide between circuit breaker and disconnector. Now, what is this and why do we need it? We know about disconnector, right? We have learned about that. The disconnector is an offload device. What does it mean? It means that disconnector can only be operated when there is no supply available. You cannot operate it when the current is flowing in through the system. It could be normal current or it could also be the abnormal current that is fault current. Disconnectors do not have capabilities to switch any sort of current. Please make that thing very clear in your mind. And that is the reason why it is called offload device. Disconnector must be operated only when there is no supply, no current flowing into the system. Now imagine. Uh, the current is flowing into the system and I open this disconnector. Now, the moment I open, the contact starts separating, the arc will stuck. Right? Arc is inevitable. Arc will stuck 100%. And disconnector do not have any capabilities to quench that arc. It does not have uh, vacuum interrupters. It does not have SF6 gas into that. So certainly it is incapable of doing that. So there will be arc and that arc can reach to an extreme level and it can cause fire and lot of damage you can imagine. So the condition is the disconnector must be operated only when there is no supply. So we must provide some interlock. So the interlock is we must first open the circuit breaker. In that way we will make sure that no current is flowing into the system because circuit breaker separate the contact. It will take care of the arc and the current will be interrupted successfully. And after that, if we open the disconnector, there is no problem because current has stopped 100%. So that is the interlock that we must provide between these two. Same thing is when we are closing, when we are closing the disconnector, we first close the disconnector and then only the circuit breaker. If I close the circuit breaker initially, of course, the contacts will be closed and current will start flowing into that. And in that scenario, if I close the disconnector, again, it's a problem because while closing, there can be arc, sufficient arcing happening and it can result into the worst situation. So that is the interlock that we must provide between circuit breaker and disconnector. Circuit breaker must be open first and then the disconnector. While closing, it's the opposite. You must close the disconnector first and then the circuit breaker. And this is also defined by the IEC standard. IEC also recommends to have this type of interlock between circuit breaker and disconnector. Now, this interlock between these two can be provided with the help of mechanical facilities and also with the help of electrical facilities. So there can be mechanical, you know, lock and key. So if you want to operate this uh, breaker and disconnector in the field, especially in the high voltage substation, you have to go 
open the circuit breaker with the help of key and then only that key can be inserted into the disconnector operating cubicle. So that is mechanical interlock. Electrical, of course, as we discussed, uh, we can provide with the help of electrical wiring logics that we have. So that is the one example uh, for interlocking and also recommended by the IEC standard. We will also see what is the IEC standard that defines this interlock for the medium voltage switch gear. The second uh, example is for the withdrawable type switching devices. Now this interlock defines that uh, wherever there is a withdrawable type circuit breaker or any other device switching device that is withdrawable that means removable from the panel one example you can see it must can only be removed when it is in the open condition that is the clear interlock defined by the standards. You cannot take out a circuit breaker when it is in the closed condition. Well, this is the example which I was talking about initially. So when the circuit breaker is open, then only you should be able to remove that circuit breaker from its original position. That is the second uh, example of the uh, interlock. Now this is applicable to all the withdrawable types. So we have circuit breakers. Also the MCCBs in low voltage panels are withdrawable. So there also this interlock applies. Clear? So those are uh, some of the common examples of the interlocks that we provide in the switch gear. Now the IEC standard that defines this switch gears interlock is basically IEC 62271-200 which is applicable to the AC metal enclosed switch gear and control gear for rated voltages above 1 kV and up to and including 52 kV. So this is the parent application for medium voltage switch gear, which also defines the different interlock that must be provided uh, with the switch gear. Uh, not necessary only these two examples that we saw will be provided. Of course, there are other things also and there can be more interlocks depending on the requirement of the customer. So that can that is possible. The different additional interlocks can be possible based on the requirement of customers. Now let us quickly summarize uh, the video. So we understood what is interlock. Interlock in switch gear are safety system that prevent the switch gear from being operated incorrectly. This is one of the mo most important parameter uh, to achieve the safety in the switch gear. The purpose, three major purposes we talked about the safety, the efficiency and the maintenance. And then we also saw the example of interlock that we must provide between circuit breaker and disconnector and also for the withdrawable type switching devices. If you are interested in learning about the basics of switch gear, I do have a very popular playlist on that. I'll put a link for it down in the description. You can go and check it out. Right. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you are clear with the interlocks part in the switch gear and why we need them. If you found this video helpful, then you do have a like button there. So please like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in learning about interlocks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.